If you don't mind, I'd like to do this uh, biker style, as we say. And if I could come down front and grab that mic. Hey, of course. So, um, well, as it turns out, I'm a you know, professor, so I'm used to doing it this way, not that way. Plus, I have adult attention deficit disorder, and so it hurts me to sit <laughs> still behind, behind the seat. Okay, um, the title of my uh, talk paper, the, the paper is quite large, and so what I'm going to end up doing uh, right now is kind of give you an introduction to it, uh, explain how it lays out, uh, and tell you what I'm claiming at the end. And so the hope is that this will appear at some point in the journal, and then you will all be able to read it in its entirety. So it is um, entitled uh, The Metaphor of God's Motorcycle. So before I tell you more about what that means, uh, let me tell you how I came up with the, or should I say how the idea came to me in the first place? Um, well, two ways the idea came to me. So one was uh, merging onto the interstate um, at high speed. Um, so I'm, I'm on a sport bike. I'm a sport bike rider primarily, um, even though I've done other rides. Um, in fact, I forgot to do the roll call. I wanted to see who was represented here. So instead of doing the uh, biker roll call, I have a different kind of roll call to do. Um, I understand what they used to tell me, that there are two main kinds of bikers, right? I'm sure you've heard this. Uh, the kind that have fell and the kind who are going to fall. So uh, let's see who we have in the room. How many fallers? How many people have fell off their bike before? Wonderful. All right. And then uh, how many non-fallers? People who ride a bike but have yet to fall. All right. Or, good show. Good show. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, um, so I'm on my crotch rocket, as they're called, right, um, barreling pretty quickly, getting ready to merge on to traffic that's already going pretty fast. I mean, they're going probably 80 or so, so I'm not ashamed. Well, I, maybe I should be. Triple digits, let's just say that. Um, as I'm going up to merge onto the interstate, I'm looking at the, car, at the cars and not watching what's in front, and as it turns out, there's a pothole um, that I'm slightly leaned um, I'm slightly lean going up, and so I hit the pothole, boom. Um, I s s loosen up my grip a bit, mm, bike wiggles a bit, keeps going, nothing happens. So as I'm on the interstate, and I back it back down to 80 or so, and as I contemplate what just has happened, I realize that I had nothing to do with the controlling of the motorcycle over that bump. Um, it had nothing to do with me. In fact, uh, then as I rode more, I start to as I, on that particular ride, um, I didn't experience myself doing much of it at all as I started to pay close attention to what was happening. I started thinking, actually, I'm taking advantage of uh, some physics at work here. Okay, so there's that. Now, how does the God part work in? Uh, well, um, as I grew up, you know, I spent a great deal of time in church and so forth. Um, I'm back now, but there was a time when I wasn't. And when I broke away and was out of the church for a while, uh, I spent those Sunday mornings riding my motorcycle. And when people who uh, knew me from being in the church came to me and say, hey, why aren't you in church anymore? And in my mind, it was t tough for me to say this sometimes, but I would say, because I feel more connected to God on my Sunday ride than I do sitting with you sometimes. Um, <laughs> and so I had to figure out how to sort that out, um, how, to, how to work that out. So uh, that's pretty much what's going to happen in this paper. So what I want to do is give you a quick overview, my punchline, tell you a few stories, um, and, and pretty much leave it at that is how it's going to go. Uh, what I'm claiming in this is that the process of learning to ride a motorcycle um, can be mistakenly thought of as actually uh, operating uh, the motorcycle. But really learning to ride involves something a, a great deal more. Now, on the philo philosophy side, what I'm saying is that um, we may learn things through the vehicle of the particular, but we're really learning the universal. Um, there's a universal idea uh, that we experience individually. But in order to become really good riders, um, you end up having to learn that experience individually for yourself. Uh, now, the way that's going to extrapolate is what I'm going to end up saying, is that learning to navigate life better is the same thing. Uh, understanding, I'm calling life God's motorcycle. And what I'm saying is the, some of the same ideas that go into learning to ride um, my motorcycle are the same ideas that go into me learning how to navigate better through this thing called life. So uh, that's where we are. Before I do that, I've got to do a quick philosophy lesson for you so that you can understand what I mean when I say particulars and universals. Um, so first, I would like everybody to look up here at the exit sign behind me. Please do. We see it. All right. Now, this is not a trick question. Uh, what is the last letter you see there? Okay. Now, if you were in my class, what I would say, I'd point and I'd say, what's that on the end, the fourth thing there on the end? And you probably would have still said a what? Letter T. T, right. And then I would have said, strictly speaking, it's metal and plastic, carved in a certain shape, yeah? Strictly speaking, that's metal uh, with some plastic under and a light behind it, yeah? Is everybody following? Okay, so what it is then, it's a particular example of what we end up calling a T. 
and you've forgotten, because we're adults now, how we learned it in the first place. But if you were a child, uh, when you're, and I have a, a one and a half year, well, she's almost two uh, right now, and when you're learning letters, what ends up happening is this. An adult shows you, let's say, a letter T on a piece of paper, and say, what's this? And they get you to finally say T. And then they show you a, a block, a wooden block with a T on it, and say, what's this? And when the kid doesn't know, sometimes the adult gets upset, and like, ah, I just showed it to you. But really what's happening is you showed them a piece of paper on the one side, and then you showed a three-dimensional block on the other side, and you're calling it the same thing. Um, what's actually happening is you're trying to get them to understand a universal concept um, by way of looking at the particulars. Does that make some, some kind of sense for some folks? Makes some kind of sense. Uh, I'll give you one more example, and then we'll keep moving quickly. Um, my goddaughter, when we were teaching her what the word nasty means, um, because I, I, I happen to get weak when somebody digs their nose and shows me the contents. And so uh, she was doing that. She dug one and showed it to me, and I was getting weak. And so I said, that's nasty. And so she said, nasty? I said, yes, nasty. Um, so a little bit time later, we were in the mall, um, and she asked for some gum, said no, and then she was chewing gum all of a sudden. Um, she had gotten it from up under one of the tables and was chewing it. And I said, oh, Lord, don't do that. That's nasty. And she said, I thought this was nasty. <laughs> right? Well, that's nasty, too. Right? Okay, so we uh, pointed a great deal of particulars, but we're really trying to understand something a little less tangible um, is what's happening. So as I tell you uh, three motorcycle stories from my personal situation, um, what I want you to be thinking about is, well, let me just say it first, and then I'll tell you what I want you to be thinking about. I'm going to start from a time when I was what this word is on my shirt, squid. Now, I don't mean to um, use that term derogatorily. Um, it just is somebody who thinks they know a lot more about riding than they do. And, um, and all of us were probably at that spot at one point or another. And so um, I'm thinking of a time when I first got my sport bike. I'm learning how to ride. And I'm thinking that I'm pretty good. I'm thinking that I'm pretty fast on the corners and all this kind of stuff. And that's what I wanted to do is ride the corners. That's why I got into motorcycling in the first place. Well, what ends up happening uh, is I get with, um, after I ride with some of the local hooligans around and kind of, you know, figure there's nothing more that has to offer, um, I join a motorcycle club. Well, um, speeding the story along, unbeknownst to me, this wasn't a normal club. It was actually a collection of ex-racers, um, and I was unaware of that. So I just thought it was a bunch of guys we were going to go out and ride. So um, I'm very new at riding. Um, I take off with my Kawasaki ZX-7, had a 750 at the time. And so I'm following behind them, and uh, we're going pretty quick, and this is the fastest I've ever ridden on public roads. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous, but as we were talking about before, I said, no, this is the group I want to be in, so I'm going to stay with these guys. They cautioned me before. They said, calm down, ride within your own limits. I heard the words. I didn't know what that meant. So <clears throat> following behind them at full speed, again, long story short, I go into one turn, which happens to be a left, and on the streets, the left used to give me a little bit of difficulty. Um, I'm making this left at probably, I don't know, 70, 80 miles an hour. And as uh, we go around the turn, the other guys are going through really quickly, just fine. Um, and as I go in, the, the, it begins to tighten up. You know what a decreasing radius is. Um, so as it starts to tighten up, uh, I panic. And then in addition to that, my bike starts doing this pogoing, wiggling action, because I had never heard anything about suspension adjustments or tire pressures or anything like that. So um, my bike is doing this pogoing action. I'm getting scared. I'm starting to run wide. And I start thinking, oh, Lord, there's a tree line right here beside this road. And I'm getting ready to get strewn across these trees. Well, I didn't make the turn. Um, I blew out about a foot off the side of the road, and so I'm riding like this, you know, uh, <laughs> off the road on a street bike. Um, then I begin to get worried about the trees on my right and the fact that getting back up onto the road involves a lip about this tall. And so um, I'm imagining that when I go to get back up on the road, pow, I'm going to fall. So I'm sitting here riding off the road at about 80 miles an hour, um, fully expecting my demise to be coming soon. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a flat spot comes, I get back on the road, um, we ride to a, a in, in little spot store, we all stop and we start to talk. I'm still scared, my heart's still beating very fast. Uh, I'm still quite worried. It wasn't a good experience at all. In fact, I spent the majority of the ride deathly afraid. Um, I didn't know what was going on. When, when we pulled up to the stop, they said, all right, now we need to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. Um, so I had on jeans, a mesh jacket, and some work boots. And they all had on leathers, one piece, um, with their helmets and gloves and all that good stuff. So I said, the first thing you might need to do is get some gear. Um, the second thing you might need to do is take a, a peek at your suspension, see what you got going on. Because what it looks like is you got a lot of soft things happening here. You're a lot, way too soft. Soft. I didn't know what that meant. Um, and then they said, uh, your tire pressure. What pressure are you running? Pressure? Uh, what, is, what does that mean? Okay. So you have this time. What ends up happening um, uh, that kind of brings me out? So I'm full-fledged squid at this point. Uh, then I start uh, understanding that they came to this understanding by way of the track. Uh, in fact, as we were waiting at that very station, this guy rolls up 
uh, on a sport bike in a one piece that's been shredded from road rash, but it's not ripped through. Um, his tires look like a used eraser, um, like he's been running through the curves really fast on public roads. Um, so he rose up, and I'm thinking, how on earth did he do that? And if he fell, why is he still riding? Because remember, my heart's still beating fast. I'm still worried. I'm thinking, if he fell off his bike, why is he out here doing this again? Okay, so full stop. <clears throat> so then I go to the track. Now the track, uh, not the straight line drag race kind of track, but the uh, kind with the curves that are linked together, usually somewhere between two and four miles long. So I go to the track. I'll be showing you some pictures in a moment of uh, me at the track, in fact. Um, so I go to the track, and, um, and then I start riding there. Now what ends up happening, again, long story short, the track is a place of isolation. It takes out a great deal of the variables. Uh, I'm not worrying about dogs running out. I'm not worrying about the police catching me. Uh, I'm not worrying about cars pulling out. I'm not worrying about people coming in the opposite direction. Uh, I'm not worrying about suddenly there being dirt or sand in the middle of the street. Um, all these things I'm not concerned about. So what I can be more concerned about is corner entry, corner exit. When am I braking? When am I applying the throttle? What are my inputs at all? And this is a very important point. Because before I was going to the track, I really didn't understand what rider inputs were. And as Gabriel said a moment ago, if on a motorcycle that's different than a car, you are a third of the package. And so whatever you end up doing translates directly into the bike. These are things I didn't know. I thought, oh, I'm just sitting on it, you know, it's doing it, you know, whatever. Uh, not knowing that every move I make, every time I push, every time I turn, going to the track allowed me to isolate um, in on these variables uh, and really start learning, really, myself um, and how I interact with the bike. Because really, what's the same is motorcycle on the street, motorcycle on the track. Uh, I'm wearing the same clothes on the street, I'm wearing the same clothes on the track. Uh, the actual asphalt's made out of the same stuff. Um, what ends up being different going through that turn is me um, and my understanding of it uh, and, and my ability to concentrate on it. Okay, um, so uh, the track thing happens. Uh, if I had more time, I'll tell you about the time I threw it down the road at about a buck fifty, which, well, the truth is the, the crash started at a buck fifty. By the time I fell off eventually, I was going about 120, uh, what people said behind me. I don't have a picture of, of the aftermath of that, but um, I got up okay, everything was all right, but it was a big learning experience. Okay, so you go through the, the track process. Now I'm going to bring us back out to the street. Four years pass since I first rode with the club and blew off the side of the turn that time and rode side of the road for a little bit. Um, I've been going to the track regularly. Uh, by this time, I've graduated from my squid status, as evident by the story I'm about to tell you now. So uh, my club finally feel that I'm worthy to go to the mountains with them. So um, how many people here have ever been to uh, such as Dahlonega, Deals Gap? Get some hands. Good show, a few. All right, for those of you who have never been, you should get there, um, especially if you're from out of the country. It's some of the best riding that our country has to offer, from what I understand, and, and uh, me riding through it, it was very good. Uh, it's very curvy, very tight, very much like a track, um, except you do have those issues of cars, dogs, cops. But the added pressure of right to the side of the right of the road, there being the tree tops yeah. instead of the tree bottoms. Um, and then on the other side, you have the mountain face. Does everybody picture? Your eyes aren't getting big enough. Are y'all picturing what I'm talking about? Okay. So on the one side, I've got a mountain face, and on the other side, I've got the tops of the trees. Okay. So I'm um, riding on this particular ride, and I happen to be leading the sec this particular section. Uh, there's about four or five guys behind me. And if you've ever ridden through the mountains, you know, you pass them of everybody. Uh, there are cars out, sport cars doing their thing. There are, you know, cruisers out. There's all kind of stuff. Um, so I'm in a sport bike group. We're riding along. Uh, again, I'm about to approach a left. As I go into this left, it's quite tight. On the right side, the tops of trees. Uh, on the left side, the mountain face. A car, a truck, comes barreling around the turn. He's in the middle of the road, so the yellow line is in the center of his vehicle. All right, so I do the thing that I, you know, that I normally do in these situations, which is I, at first I go towards the yellow line to try to spook him off the line a little bit uh, before we get up, so, because I have confidence in my ability to, to turn in after that. So what I end up doing first, I pull over to the yellow line to try to get him to pull in a bit, um, as he comes in a bit, then I go back out, make the turn. But as I'm going around him, I start to think, he looked as if he was trying to get away from somebody. I really did think this. I thought, he looks like he's racing. Sure enough, as I complete the left, go around a right, and come around another left, here comes another car, one of these um, Subaru uh, souped up, looks like, kind of like a rally car. Uh, he's coming full steam.